All right, hello, idiots on parade, the too ugly for a TV podcast. We mock the news so you don't have to. Hello, Jake. How's it going? All is well here. That is Jake Vevra, stand-up comedian in New York City. I am a stand-up comedian named Nathan Timmel in Iowa City. And Jake, I want to go right out of the gate with something I am stunned was not, I don't want to say bigger news, but this is why I hate Democrats. This is why I hate liberals. I think they are so bad at messaging and propaganda. Republicans are fantastic at messaging and propaganda. They they go defund the police and fucking drive it home. It goes across every politician. It's like they send out a memo. Everybody's saying it. Democrats are scattershot. Why Democrats were not promoting the shit out of the fact that Kid Rock was uh, seen drinking a Bud Light is beyond me. He's There's a picture of him. It was on Twitter. Uh, it made a very tiny blip. But you think Democrats would have been screwed? Hey, Kid Rock, how's that Bud Light? Just poking fun for the sake of poking fun. Not that it's news, but just you think every Democratic politician would just point out the, the silliness of it. Just, just for the fun. Just for fun. Why are they so bad at at just hammering everything home with Republicans. It doesn't matter what happens. They just go at it and hammer it home and then move on. Democrats are always like wandering in the darkness without a flashlight, trying to find something to, to make noise out of. Yeah, that's fair. If, if Dylan Mulvaney was caught eating Chick-fil-A in public, we'd be hearing about it. Absolutely. <laughs> that's a great goddamn example. It, it'd be blasted everywhere. It'd be it a goddamn would... meme. They would because they want to get what what they're good at is getting people to turn on one another. And that's what showing Kid Rock with a Bud Light should have done. Like it should have pointed out. And yeah, but just now just in defense the, of, of Kid went. Rock, I heard he had drank like 12 cores by then. So he didn't realize what he had in his hand. <laughs> he was uh, he was going for the old baker's dozen. And you can't always read the can uh, once you, you hit the double digits. Not that I want to defend uh, Kid Rock, uh, which you are doing, and I can't. Uh, I'm not even sure of that phrase. Even when you are blind drunk, you can still see images in colors and the silver cores can and the blue Bud Light. You Even if you can't read it, and we're not sure Kid Rock can even read when sober, I mean, you can tell colors. Sometimes, but uh, unless unless you have fentanyl in your bloodstream, I think fentanyl may have been involved. Well, I mean, it is Kid Rock, so it was either that or uh, Adderall. There's, there was something. There was something for sure. But, uh, yeah, I it could be, you know, Bud Light has marched back. It, it, it is it has walked back. It's uh, it's pro trans stuff so far that maybe maybe the kid was appeased. Maybe he was like, hey, man, fuck it. You guys are good with me again. Well, it was within a week that I think Don Jr. Uh, came out and said, hey, uh, Anheuser-Busch has always been great to the Republican Party. The, this one person fucked up. Leave it alone. And yet nobody listened, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah, it just goes to show that um, even uh, it, I mean, it never does you any good to apologize. It's it's yeah. apologizing in 2023, no matter what it's for, is just admitting defeat. So you might as well just fucking ignore the backlash for the, almost anything. You know, yeah. like if they if 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 you have like a human trafficking ring, OK, you're probably going to have to answer a few questions for that. But I anything less than that, just pretend it didn't happen. And eventually they're going to be getting mad at somebody. Else. If they wouldn't have apologized or done whatever. Uh, they would have been mad uh, that there was drag story hours or something the next week. It would have it would have fucking gone away. But they apologized. They tried to walk it back. And that just makes the other side go on the offensive. And go, oh, see, see, you know, you fucked up. Now we're going to really let you have it. Or they could have really dragged it out going off something we talked about last week. They could have gone. All right. That person fucked up. They're fired for fucking up. And then released like a can with a, a Confederate flag on it. But then the person that got fired, the 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 VP, there were two people that were suspended. Uh, if they got fired instead of suspended, then they could have been like the Starbucks manager last week and turn around and sued Bud uh, Anheuser Busch. And then it could have just become this whole thing where Anheuser Busch goes, "Oh, woke liberals liberals are trying to sue us because we stood up for American values and really uh, championed like, hey, we're we're in court, so." 
buy our product so that we can take on woke liberals that we fired. I don't know. There, there could have been a spin they could have used. They just went the wrong way. It's, it's a tough, it's tough to spin and play both sides with the same product. I think my, my, I still go with my uh, initial suggestion of just have Bud Light be the pro trans beer buy another beer since they, they own a bunch of different beer companies just have one that has like uh confederate flags or green pepe the frogs on the can or whatever and like now you have the right wing beer as well and you're selling to both sides there was one of those i don't remember i remember it popped up in my twitter feed where a guy said i'm starting you know pro gun beer in response to bud light all they had to do was buy his beer company and just market it like, all right, yeah, I, I, I like where your head's at. Make your pro uh, gun or anti bud beer. We're just gonna own it. I like that it's pro gun. Like that doesn't have anything to do with the trans debate. It doesn't. It, it was it's like a completely a different or something like thing. that. And it's like, are you convincing a bunch of armed people to get drunk in public? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you? You, you? You're not setting yourself up for a potential lawsuit in the future. No, not at all. All right. Good. I just wanted to touch Alcohol. on that. There's Together. more. Together. Course. Like what? You're going to get sued. I um. this this again, this we're, I'm covering small stories up front. This was one sentence in a story. Um, Maui burned a couple weeks ago. It's been in the news ever since. I sent you a couple links. One said uh, tourists stay away. And then I've read several others that said, hey, we need tourist dollars because if all the hotels right, are seems, empty, yeah, a little that, bit like a catch 22. I mean, exactly. And I said, I can see both sides. Maybe you don't want tourists going to the burned out area, but the rest of the island, if it has hotels, fill them up and spend money. You know, it. it they, they, they're saying, um, oh, people went snorkeling, you know, 20 miles away. I, it seems in poor taste, but at the same time, anytime you are doing anything in life, something horrible is happening at the exact same time somewhere else. Now, maybe it's just a proximity thing, but as Maui was burning, there was sex trafficking going on. Like something awful is always happening. Does that mean you shut your life down and sit in the fetal position in the corner? No, you try and do the best you can. Uh, if If you're there on vacation, like throw 20 bucks into a red cross bucket in the hotel lobby i don't know but i can see both sides of it what the the part that i thought didn't get enough coverage that i thought was funny is um i, sh I should just read the sentence i'll just say it oprah winfrey uh and stevie nicks and paris hilton face severe criticism to their responses to uh the tragedy oprah winfrey owns a thousand acres on maui the talk show host was denied entry she okay i'll back up uh, Oprah was recently seen giving out supplies to survivors who had taken refu refuge in a gymnasium. The talk show host was reportedly denied entry initially after she asked to bring her television crew with her. Okay, that right there is the fuckery that should be talked about. Hey, I want to go do generous things, but I need to be filmed. Do it. Why the fuck do you have it with you in the first place? If you want to donate, if you want to do good... Just go do it. You don't need to fucking call your television crew to like, hey, yeah, you getting the shot? Oh, here, here's a poor person. There you go. Okay, quick, give me a sanitary wipe. I got to get the poor person germs off me. The fact she took a television crew in the first place tells you more than you ever wanted to know about her as a person. It, it does. I could see. I mean, there's also something. Of, well, hey, I'm trying to raise awareness, and and we're gonna get donation dollars out of this. And yeah, yeah, and don't film her then. Just. Film That's, everybody but her. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, but I'm sure the crew was doing something like that. I, I don't know the exact details of it. You know, I mean, I I, I, I could see it both ways. Look, and, and I get how it, it's got to be a little bit of a love hate thing with the tourists there. In general. Oh, yeah, I've seen articles that say that, 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 you know, they, they, it's, it's, uh, they feel bound to them. There's like, right, they yeah. provide so much of the economy, but at the same time, they're destroying the island. I, yeah, like that article said, I think four out of every five dollars spent in Maui is from tourists. Right. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's uh, four fifths of your economy. Basically, you kind of need it, you know, uh, at the same time. I remember being really uncomfortable when we were in Cancun just on the resort because they it's such like um, 
Uh, they they try to they treat you like a rich person, which I felt uncomfortable with. You, well, you know? it's all white people being taken care of by not white people. Yeah, it feels weird. It's it's not like just a regular hotel where it's like, hey, yeah. how's it going? Okay, cool. Here's the stuff. Like I'm more comfortable with that. You know, this is oh yes, right right this way, Your Majesty. You know, and it's like I, 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 you know, uh, I'm not the Duke of Suffolk here. Like, what the fuck are we doing? You know? Yeah, I want to just get so, drunk. Yeah, and 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 so like I so I was uncomfortable with the shit, and I was really kind of going out of my way to be really polite to the yeah people who were overly polite to me. But at the same time, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, I'll bet the person who expects and demands this type of treatment is a real fucking asshole, and and they got yep. and Maui's the expensive version of where I was at. So it, it, there's a lot of these people that are probably fucking douchebags. And having to having to kiss people's ass fucking sucks, even if they are paying you. So oh, absolutely, I, I get that. Like I yeah. definitely get it. At the same time, you do need the two tours dollar because there is another place that gets hit with hurricanes and shit. Uh, uh, that you, you know, earthquakes, natural disasters. Another island on the other side of the United States called Haiti. Uh, that doesn't have the tour, and it takes them a long fucking time to bounce back from yeah. uh, a natural disaster. So, uh, I I think if, if tourists are gonna go, maybe the companies themselves, like the the resorts, the the government even should like okay, you know, do this, do A and B and C, but. D and E are off limits right now because it's recovering. You, you, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. maybe you don't do the snorkeling thing right next to where people were jumping in the water. It's certain things like that. If if you do have part of the island just in severe poverty and like there clearly needs to be some kind of tax redistribution of, of the stuff coming in because of the situation of yeah. the people who own the resorts are fucking billionaires. While this other part of the the island is a ghetto, yeah, maybe they should have to have uh, 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 maybe they should be taxed a little harder if if they are getting taxed heavily and the government's not doing a good job of of getting goods to the people, then then that needs to fucking change too. You know, it might not just be a a, a, a thing where well, we're just letting these greedy rich people fucking keep all the tourism money themselves. It might be the government is 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 failing in that regard too it's probably some um combination of both and there there should be it comes from the the corporations themselves the 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 hotels the industries they set the standards for how you are to treat guests and that can be dialed back like you and i like you and i experienced in cancun and other places it can be hey treat people with respect but if they treat you like a servant or a dick walk away tell a manager like hey I can't deal with that person. That's an asshole. And maybe that person gets a talking to like, hey, we're glad to have you at our resort. We want you to have a good time. Be nice or you're fucking out. You know, like that. that's a tough thing, though, dude, because it is especially tough, but... it's a vacation thing. They're, they're really trying to push themselves on like customer service and customer service. Like it's such a big but thing. But that can now. be done well without being, you know, appeasing. And yes, Massa, you know, that you you can. It, it can. It. it can be. It's a, it's a tough thing to try to. Uh, uh... I'm going to get canceled for that reference, by the way, I bet. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 it does feel like that. It feels like that. I it felt does. Like I was a fucking bad guy in Django some of the time. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Just, you know, I'm just, just a dude on vacation. I appreciate you getting me the drink. But, you know, you you don't have to bow as you as you walk. Yeah, away yeah, from yeah. Me. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. But I you can feel there definitely is a brand of douchebag that likes that kind of fucking hoity toity yeah. treatment. You know, but don't cater to them. Don't, that's what I'm saying is don't yeah, cater it, to that brand of douchebag. It's a tough thing to once that's already in place. That's a tough thing to yeah. dial back because, OK, now is this employee complaining because this customer is actually being a dick or the, the employee's got a fucking attitude? Are we going to get less Yelp stars and things yeah. like that? You know, like it's it's a tough thing. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. I was uncomfortable with it, but I'm like, if it's a tough thing to try to, to dial back uh, once it's already going on and your companies are just sort of known for well this is how they treat you at at all inclusive resorts i do want to go back uh, i'm having a back spasm right now that's why i keep turning uh this is i'm in pain um 
I want to go back five minutes and steal a joke. If I could credit the comedian that told this joke, I absolutely would. This is not my joke. I heard it at an open microphone in Los Angeles, you know, over a decade ago, just an open mic. It was the one of the best jokes I've ever heard, which is why I remember it. You brought up Haiti and uh, the comedian. And this joke was later stolen by Carlos Mencia and put on an HBO special. The, the, the comment was, hey, do you know how, because uh, it was a, it involved, he was wrapping up uh, something that just happened in Haiti, and we were uh, in Iraq at the time, and he said, you know how they keep saying Iraq is about democracy and uh, caring for the people? That's bullshit. It's about oil. If you could run a car on AIDS, we would have invaded Haiti years ago. And I just thought that was the funniest goddamn line I had ever yeah. heard. If you could run a car on AIDS, we would have invaded Haiti. That fucking struck my funny bone. And it's true. It's accurate. That's true. But it would, you know, it would end up getting the other car sick. It would be a whole fucking ordeal, you know? <laughs> hey, let's jump to something. Plus, I couldn't have... fuck cars anymore. That would be awful. Oh, yeah. And who doesn't want to fuck a good car? What that That tailpipe, the muffler is just sitting there begging for it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Jake, I teed this one up just for you because you have talked about this uh, when when it all started. Um, I refuse to call Twitter by anything other than Twitter. This rebranding is stupid. And I actually pulled this from threads, that stupid uh, Mark Zuckerberg Twitter wannabe, a New York University professor with 560,000 followers says he's been locked out of his Twitter account for two weeks because he declined to meet with Elon Musk. I mean, this is what you talked about. What is Elon going to do? He says he's opening it up to free speech, but a marketing professor who's also known as an author and public speaker said he was locked out of his uh, Twitter account after a quarrel with Elon Musk. Uh, a mutual friend reached out and Elon and said, Elon feels unfairly attacked by me and wants to meet. I declined. And that two days later, he could no longer access his account. This is exactly what you said. Why is he buying Twitter? What's yeah. it going to come up with with business practices? And as you said, you you said this too. You are surprised by how blatant he is making his his revenge fantasies and censorship. Well, yeah, and I well, I was a little bit wrong, and I didn't think it was so much a revenge fantasy thing. Like I thought it was more of a um, cover up. Don't talk about battery cover, minerals. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Shit like that, because it, I, I am right in the broad sense of like, hey, you don't I get that you want free speech and you think that's an important thing on Twitter. That all makes sense to me. But why is it worth 44 billion to you? You don't pay 44 billion to tweet whatever you want. You pay 44 billion to shut people the fuck up. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. You know, um, it, it I thought it was going to be a little sneakier. I thought it was going to be, well, I'm going to do whatever I want in certain countries to get the cobalt I need or, or something else he had planned for the future, maybe. And I want to reserve the right to just call anybody who tries to call me out in these places, uh, misinformation, hate speech, conspiracy theories, whatever. And I'll get them fucking kicked off. But to do that, you would kind of have to keep things business as usual. So it couldn't be a revenge fantasy thing. It couldn't be, well, I'm going to shut this professor up. You know, like I'm going to let the professor call me a fucking asshole. As long as he doesn't start talking about the minds, then that's actually hate speech and misinformation that's being spread by um, angry fascists in that country who want to take it over. Blah, blah, blah. Like I'll make it up. But yeah. Like. It, I thought it was going to be a sneakier thing like that. If that was really the way he was going in terms of, you know, covering up nefarious activities, uh, I, I, then he it would not be X. He wouldn't have fucked around with the blue check marks. He wouldn't be doing this whole thing. I, I, I think it really is about shutting people up, but more like the Howard Hughes buying out the restaurant just so he could fire the manager that wouldn't let him eat there, that kind of thing. Yeah, and... It's funny you said talk about free speech. He 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 tries to he does the misdirect thing, the 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 so called balance, where he locks this guy out of his account because it's just one user, and sure there'll be an article written about it. Uh, but then he says we're going to do away with the block feature so that everybody can see everything because I'm about free speech. And I don't know if you saw this yesterday or two days ago when he when he made the announcement that he's going to do away with the block feature. But James Woods said, hey, 
if you don't allow me to block people, then I'm going to leave. And Elon said, fine, click cancel your account. It's just funny that James Woods, the king troll on Twitter, who who I think was blocked uh, off Twitter until Elon took over because he's just such a bad troll, is is worried about being uh, people he's blocked coming back at him. I thought that was right. hilarious irony. Yeah, the the block feature that's not that's not so much about like a free speech issue. That's just like, hey man, I I, I don't want to get DMs from a fucking psycho. You know, well DMs guess, he said would remain. He said DMs you can still would block okay, messages. Okay. But anybody can start tagging like, hey, James Wood, you're a fuck stick. Stop being an asshole. And he can't block them in the, the okay, general thread. But you're still you're still getting trolled. You know, yeah. like it's yeah, it's just it's, funny that James Woods, the king troll, is upset that he might right. get trolled. <laughs> right. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, and maybe it's a thing where he's like Twitter allowed these guys to fucking. I, I, I don't know, borderline stalk me with the like kind or stock isn't the right word, but docs, I guess by, yeah, by yeah, telling yeah. the locations of my plane. Um, I'm just going to pay 44 billion to tell them to go fuck themselves. And then I'll get in there and just destroy the goddamn app. Like, cause I don't give a fuck. I'm going scorched earth, you know? Yeah. It's fine. It, it, well, I don't know. It, it's, it's amazing that uh, Zuckerberg's piece of shit, the uh, competition did, did that thing where like, Oh, everybody signs up and then nobody uses it. And everybody's still on Twitter and Twitter's just horrible right now. I log yeah. in and all I see is just bullshit and I, I log right out. I don't, I don't even use it. So I don't know. They, they, I don't I don't know what the solution is. Maybe they both go away. That, that to me would be best case scenario is is uh, threads dies and Twitter dies and everything dies. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what's, what's going to replace it all, but uh uh, yeah, I, at the at the rate it's going, I can't see either one being what Twitter used to be. Yeah, if that makes sense, it could right. it could just be he ends up selling it to somebody. They buy it, they turn it into Twitter again, and they yeah, kind of put undo the, what put he the, did. Put the bird back on, make it blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the, one of the dumbest things he did was that blue check mark thing because I'm like, well, if anybody can just pay eight dollars to get it, it's not, it's it's not. It it stops being the thing that people wanted out of a blue check mark. You know, yeah, it's, well, it's as, not the as status proven, thing anymore. It's not the verification. Yep. And that was proven. The it instant people, I think Valerie Bertinelli uh, was the first one I saw that made big news by, I don't remember what she did. We could look it up, but she yeah. changed her name to like, I, it might have even been Elon Musk and said, I yeah. endorse all Democratic candidates. We were doing that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, this to me, uh, this was big news. Is big news. We were supposed to have a um, uh, uh, major news conference tomorrow morning. We are recording on Monday, August twenty twenty first. Tomorrow on Tuesday, former President Trump was going to hold a, a a press conference to present what he called a quote irrefutable report about the twenty twenty election in Georgia, but he canceled it. He, for three years, has been saying, I have all the proof that the election fraud uh, took place, but he refuses to release it. He refuses to. Now he's saying he will only show these documents in court, which, of course, he's had three years to do. And every time they go to court, a uh, judge says, yeah, you got nothing. Rudy Giuliani has, admit, has admitted in court they don't have proof. I, why are people still buying into his cult of stupid? I yeah, I mean he he went to court in Republican run states and and they fucking threw all this out, man. If, His own if, appointed if he, judges threw it out. Trump yeah, appointed judges yeah. threw it out. It's uh it's pretty rough. I, I'm just glad they're actually indicting him on shit involving January 6th and the 2020 election as opposed to like this guy double parks, we're indicting him. Like what? All right. Yeah. I mean, and they have the phone call. That should be the nail in the coffin. I just need you to find me one more vote. We'll take care of the rest. You just find the vote. It, who knows what's going to happen? Every time they say it's a slam dunk. I mean, the quid pro quo, the quid pro quo, a fucking was on the phone there saying, you dig up the shit on Hunter Biden and we'll give you the, the military shit you need. They, they, they didn't do anything about that. He got impeached by Democrats only. That that's could happen again. Well, you know, even, even I, though, well, I that was. See... Go ahead, go ahead. 
No, no, I was just going to say that's governmental. That was Democrat, Republican. This is a court of law, so maybe it'll be different. But you get two dumb fucks that lie in the jury room, two assholes that go like, you know, uh, I, I think I can be fair. And then they get into the jury box and they're like, no, fucking Trump, love Trump. Like they, it, you yeah. know. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it could be, but I, it's just, it's a tough one to sell because it wasn't that close. The election, you know what I mean? Like I could see how your spidey senses is get tingling if um if it came down to one state, if it was like the 2000 election, you know, if yeah. it came down to one state and there was votes in irregularities Florida. in the county. I like I get that. This wasn't close. This was four fucking states he lost by. This was four. It, it, it wasn't just one or two counties. It was like tens of thousands of votes. It I kind of view that like people getting mad at Tom Brady for deflating the balls. I view this as I I view the 2020 election conspiracies like the flake gate where they go that he took a little bit of air out of the ball, gave him a slight advantage. It's like the Colts lost by 87 points. What are we talking about here, dude? Did it help him 87 points worth of fucking like air out of that ball? I, I don't think so. Good point. All right. What else do we got? Uh, that was the tourist thing we already talked about. Um, oh, this is fun. Oh, I, I hope go- we get comments that are angrier at Tom Bra- at my Tom Brady comment than they are the Trump comment. Oh, we got a, we got an angry comment last week. I sent did you. We? Are you seriously oh, you accusing Republicans of doing to Biden what Democrats have done to Trump for seven years? Hypocrite much or just on podcasts? Uh, that came off us talking about how what was that last week? Yeah, um, it's too it's too loose. Of, I don't I don't know what the fuck he's referring to. So I don't. Well, last week we we we've made fun of Hunter Biden nonstop on this podcast. And last week, oh, I we love him. Was. I love the guy. I want to party with that guy in Maui. I don't I don't I don't care that it just got lit on fire. I'm partying <laughs> with Hunter Biden. Last week smoking crack uh, with those big flower necklaces. That's who we're gonna be doing. We uh, last week we talked about uh, an article where uh, a US uh, a politician, a Republican, um two things two things with hunter biden we talked about how one um a shit ton of republicans wanted uh, a, a special prosecutor named uh, in the hunter biden case and they picked the person they wanted to be named the special prosecutor and the instant that person was named special prosecutor they flipped and started complaining and saying oh this is bullshit and part of the reason was one of those politicians went on i believe it was fox and said well i mean we don't really have any evidence that there's been, you know, anything bad going on with Burisma or the Biden family. We just know that Hunter got favoritism. And then the the Fox host had to say, but, you know, there was favoritism. He had to dial it back and go, oh, yeah, we, we believe the smoking gun is still out there. We just haven't found it yet or whatever. And so we talked about that. And this guy has gotten pissed by saying that, uh, you know, the, the Democrats, did, except as we just said a second ago, the smoking guns were all there. They were recorded phone calls. It was Trump on the phone saying Yes, if you give me Hunter Biden info, I will give you Ukraine right. the military assistance. And it was a a member of the military that turned him in on that, not a Democrat. So it's it's just funny that we make fun of both sides. It's just that one side is absurdly more cultist than the other right now. Yeah, that's true. But uh, fair enough to the right wing turd that made that comment. Uh, I will give you more Hunter Biden conspiracies. I heard that they found crack where the Maui fires were started. I think there should be an investigation to see if Hunter Biden started the fires in Maui with the crack pipe. I'm going to go you one further and say Hunter Biden did start those fires. I don't have evidence. I don't have a smoking gun. I know it in my heart to be true. So I'm going to take your allegation and I'm going to double down on it and say, I believe you. I now believe that Hunter Biden started those fires without evidence, just because I'm sure there was. Well, I'm going to double cocaine. down on, on yours. I do have evidence that Hunter Biden started the fires in Maui with the crack pipe. Um, I'll release a report next Monday. It'll be in my report. I, I will do you one better. I, I have evidence, too. I will release my report in two years, but only to a judge in a private room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you guys got to buy tickets and stuff. It's going to be a whole event. Yes, yes, yes. And if and you buy can my prove, pillow as well. Yes. And if you, if anybody out there can prove either of us wrong, then we will give you five million dollars, which an, uh, a court of arbiters will uphold. But we'll say it's a lie. And uh, yeah. And everything we've said before this, we don't stand by so that we are not uh, held liable for any five million dollars. We're two assholes on a podcast just this for legal purposes. Podcast. 
Yeah, that's right. But the the evidence is real. I have yes, it. it's real. I have, but don't I have hold the us crack to that. pipe. It, the crack pipe fits. The crack pipe fits. You can't fits. I can't speaking, talk. Speaking of uh, Ukraine, uh, Kevin Sorbo. I I don't follow him on Twitter, but he pops up in my timeline uh, more often than he should, and he, I always find him amusing. Uh, I thought this tweet was great. We couldn't get ten billion for a border wall, but we have one hundred billion to send to Ukraine. Tell me how that isn't money laundering. Tell me how it is. That's literally the government saying we're going to spend money here, but not here. And there are a ton of Republicans that vote to send aid to Ukraine because they understand the importance of, you know, what's going on over there. I would like to know how it is money laundering. I know a lot of uh, idiots say, oh, uh, Ukraine is all money laundering, but they never explain how. I I mean, I'm all ears. Yeah, it's... um... You could say that it's unnecessary, that it's a scam, whatever. But money laundering is when you like open a legitimate business to take money that you've gotten through illicit means. And like, oh, my um, my my psychic store on the corner of uh, whatever the fuck, you know, First Avenue and Third Street, that tiny little thing where they do five dollar palm readings. It made 18 million dollars last year. Yeah. A lot of palm readings. That's or the reverse or the reverse. Oh, I had to remodel my office and here's an invoice. Oh, it, it said that the new carpeting cost ten thousand dollars. Well, I'm here here here's a thousand dollars. Just add a zero to there we go. Now my new carpeting cost a hundred thousand dollars. What happened to the other ninety? You know, like right. that's and money even, the, even that that's more like um like blanket spending. That's 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 more like extortion. You know, no, 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 no. I'm saying that when you when you when you like you just change the expense amounts. So it says you spend more and then you keep the rest like that. That's how it works. Yeah, that's more like embezzlement, you know, so it's like if they were accusing, hey, this is there's embezzlement going on. I don't think. Oh, you mean the accusation. Right, 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 right. Yes. The accusation. It doesn't involve money laundering. No, it it doesn't. And they call it laundering because you're basically cleaning dirty money. Yeah. And so that you can get it above surface, pay taxes on it that, you know, under the guise that I got this through this legitimate business. Legitimate and now means. I can actually buy things with it, like houses and stuff. Too. And the reason there wasn't the money for the border wall is because Democrats and Republicans didn't agree on that. You did not have Democrats voting to support the border wall. You have Republicans voting to support aid to Ukraine. They're the silent ones. You have Marjorie Taylor and Gre- Taylor Green screaming about Ukraine, but then you have you know uh, the turtle and Lindsey Graham and and others who just quietly vote and, and to to support Ukraine. Yeah, that's that's how we had money for Ukraine and not the border wall. Republicans can't all go too hard against wars. I just you know it's it's <laughs> they like them. They like them. The defense industry likes yes. them. The the munitions uh, manufacturers like them. Yeah, I, I, right. I got paid ten million dollars last year by by a company that, that 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 makes drones. So now I got to fight in Ukraine. Final story, and uh, we only have a couple of minutes left, but we we got to touch on this. I already talked about it on my own on the side. Uh, Board Apes investors sue Sotheby's, Paris Hilton, and others as NFT prices collapse. Board Apes is a, a company that sold NFTs to, and I love this word, sold them to investors. Hey, invest in this NFT. You're going to buy it. It's a digital picture that's on the blockchain. Anybody can download it. They can use it as their avatar on Facebook or uh, Instagram. They can print it. They can hang it on their wall. You own it. Anybody can do whatever they want with it. You you, you don't own a copyright to it, but just give us money. You own this picture that's online. And now people are saying they felt misled. Paris Hilton told them to buy this, this digital picture. And they thought, I mean, this is the crypto shit we've talked about. Who thought this was a good fucking idea? The dumbest of the dumb. And now they're angry because they're losing money on something that didn't. You bought air and the air blew away with the wind. And now you're mad. It's your fault. You're stupid. It's your fault. You're stupid. I mean, everybody other than Paris Hilton told you it was dumb. So like where you know what I mean? You, you clearly didn't add the um the 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 giant chasm of voices that were screaming at you not to spend thousands of dollars for a digital photo of something. Uh, and you were like, Hey man, I know who I'm going to listen to for investment. Um, 
a lady who inherited Hilton hotels and never actually had to build wealth into anything like, Hey, more power to her. Uh, she looks great. I would maybe take beauty tips from her. Yeah. And not so much about it. Listen to how come Paris Hilton was the one telling you to invest and not Winthrop von Hilton the first, like whoever, whatever rich Warren guy Buffett, started, George Soros. Yes, yes. The old guys in the family who built Hilton Hotel. How come they weren't investing in NFTs? Oh, because it's for dummies, because it's for fucking marks, because it's for you. South Park mocked it. Bill Maher mocked it. Saturday Night Live did a sketch on how stupid it was. And you went, eh, that woman that uh, get, got famous because she was in a sex tape. I'm, I'm going to listen to her. Not just a yeah. sex tape, but multiple sex tapes. Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me uh, 17 times. Well, That's right. I don't take any advice from people that don't have sex tapes out there. No, I mean, if you market it right. The only the only person I would not take advice from with a, with a sex tape is, um, oh, God, I can't remember her name. It's teen Mom. Like she mm -hmm. actively tried to put out a sex tape to become big, like Kim Kardashian or Paris Hilton, and it. What well, was she still a teen at the time? Because I can yeah, tell you no, exactly she was why. Twins, like Farrah Abrams, I think her name was. She she know. actively was like, I'm a Christian, and oh, this this is just me and my boyfriend, and it had lighting and different camera angles and editing. Like the Paris Hilton one was literally just it's a static camera that sort of moved. Yeah, it was not. Yeah, this had production value, and she tried to oh. It's a leak of me and my no, it, no, it's not. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't. I didn't see that one. Uh, it's too I bad. Can't... It's too bad. I the only reason I heard of it because it was such a I don't want to say big story, but the story was like the accidental leak. Like it was you're trying way too hard for this. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jake can be found on all these social medias at jake vevra is that no it's, I, I always want to call it an ampersand but that's that's the the squirrel that's the end uh so just the the at jake at vevra symbol. on I just call instagram it twitter symbol. and anywhere else i can be found at nathan timmel.com or i think nathan timmel or n timmel on all the socials um if you want to leave us uh mean comments we'd love to talk about them on here if you want want to leave us nice comments that that'd make us happy and make our hearts full that that'd make us warm and fuzzy yes other than that, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We will talk at you next week. Jake, my friend, I will see you in person next week. Yeah, see you in person. Let's go smoke crack with Hunter Biden and burn down islands. Let's do it.